Did you know that we like to camp? This view is seriously one of the best views. So we got bikes. You know mine has a cup holder on it. I, I do have to come clean. Did you know we like to camp? We got a flat tire, you guys. We got a flat tire. We're making the most of it, wouldn't you say? We have parked our camper just for a couple weeks to do some family stuff. But we're about to head out on the road and we got a flat tire, you guys. We got a flat tire. Most of you likely don't know that my dad was an auto mechanic. He owned an auto mechanic shop for a lot of years, so he knows a lot about vehicles, trailers, all of it. So we just FaceTimed and he told me how to do it. So I think I'm gonna try to do it. Let's try. So here's an opportunity to learn. Change of plans. So we actually had a friend in the neighborhood and he's gonna come by and help us. He's got all this stuff already. We got some good friends, you guys, but I do want to learn how to do this, so hopefully he will actually show me so I can uh, know what I need to get if we're in a situation in the future where we don't have help right around the corner. So whenever we had this problem in one of our previous videos, I'm sure you saw that we had someone do it. But this time, we're gonna have my friend Nick show us how to do it so we can do it in the future and we'll have all the tools so this won't ever be a problem again. That's what I'm saying, get you some good friends that'll come help you out. And we have some, my good friend Nick, who I've known since I was probably 12 years old, lives nearby, saving the day for us, and he's teaching us how. So whenever this happens again, we won't need to call anyone, we'll handle it ourselves, but we can't even tell you how thankful we are for Nick. There he is. Hopefully this, this is the last time this will happen. So I would suggest grabbing a jack stand. Okay, <clears throat> cool. That way when you get it up off the ground, uh -huh. you got something stable to put underneath. Nice. Just like nice. you see. This one to just spin on you. Look at that. Freshy fresh tire. Thank you, Nick, so much. That was super kind of you. He also gave us a jack. So whenever we're in a pinch, we can use it. Learned a lot. Again, thank you. We appreciate that help. made it. We're at Sebastian Inlet State Park. It's in Sebastian, Florida, and it really is tropical paradise here. Surrounded by sea grapes, mangroves, there's a beach, there's a swimming cove, there is a boat ramp, there's another little swimming cove where you can put in your kayaks and your stand-up paddle boards. Very calm water over there. It is beautiful here. And we can't wait to show you around. This spot is amazing. This view is seriously one of the best views that we've ever seen. What do you think, Amber? I love it. Anything where you can see the water directly from your campsite and nothing is in between you and that is a winner to me. And it's been so hard to get a campsite here. So we have a few campgrounds that we keep our eye on just to get a spot at. We wanna show you guys it. We wanna share some of its beauty, unique and spectacular because of that water view. And yes, this is the view from our campsite. Y'all know whenever we got a view like this, we're right on the water. I gotta wake up early and try to go fishing, try to catch some fish. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna go too. I'll only be spectating. I don't think she's gonna get up at 6 a.m. with me. I really don't think so. You gonna get up at 6 a.m. with me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. I wanna get up early. Let me check the forecast, the fish forecast. Fish forecast, they're hungry. 100% chance of all the fish being hungry. Go, go, go. Y'all, we are making some Dutch oven bread tomorrow. <laughs> making some bread. So I got that loaf sitting, it's sitting in the back of the car, ready to get Dutch ovened tomorrow. <laughs> we got big things. You guys know we cook in every single episode. We cook every some, episode. It's on fire. <laughs> so you know at the end of the video, we're gonna be cooking <laughs> up something very Italian, very delicious, very much in the Dutch oven. So stay tuned for that at the end of the video.
towards the end of the video. Not the end of the video, but you know, kind of like the last quarter of the video. Yeah! I gotta say that this tiny camper is such a conversation starter. I can't even tell you how many people stop us and ask us, first of all, do you sleep in that? Someone just asked us. Someone else said, oh, it pops up. No, no it doesn't, this is it. So, I mean, I can't even tell you how many people we've met from just talking about our tiny camper. You know, if we had a 40 footer, no one would be talking to us. When I was a kid, I'd hear adults say, I'm not awake until I have my coffee, and I really didn't know what they were talking about, but definitely know what they're talking about now. There's fish jumping out here. It's probably like 6.45 right now. Fish are jumping. Let's see if I can get any. Here we go. This is a much better spot right here. Much more comfortable for me. It's so nice and clear right there. Looks like it gets really deep too, so. No luck with the fish, but we'll try again later. Like Amber says, it's called fishing, not catching. That's right. Let's go eat by the water. We got an easy little smoked salmon board right here that we're gonna have for a breakfast and uh, looking good. We have tomatoes, spinach, capers, jalapeno cream cheese, and smoked salmon on a Dave's Everything Bagel. So we got bikes. You know mine has a cup holder on it, more of a beach cruiser, and look at this seat. I like a big seat. You know, some surface area on there so you can have a really comfy ride. the Sebastian Inlet in the water and the water is perfect. So hot outside today and it's like a, a little private beach out here. I mean there's probably like eight or ten people but it's a Monday so if you can ever go camping on a weekday definitely do that and go out early before other people get there. So we're just gonna chill, lounge, stand up paddle board. We're making the most of it wouldn't you say? You know what time it is? It's time to cook. Time to bust out the Dutch oven. It's been a little while since we've used it. Maybe one episode ago. Anyways, in the Dutch oven today, we have a double feature. We are gonna be baking some bread. We got some fresh bread with some Italian herbs grinded in there, some rosemary to go along with our very Italian meal. That's chicken cacciatore. Let's get to cooking. This is exactly the kind of view I like whenever I'm cooking outdoors. I gotta light up this charcoal with this little thing. My torch lighter broke. Sad. To bake our bread, we're gonna do it in the Dutch oven. And if you guys are new to our channel, you gotta know, first of all, I love to cook with the Dutch oven outdoors. Second of all, if you ever decide to get a Dutch oven, there are diagrams out there that tells you how many charcoal briquettes to put on the top and the bottom for whatever desired temperature you're trying to achieve. So if you're trying to get 
400 degrees, you, let's say it's you know 15 on the top, nine on the bottom, something like that. Do a Google search and you'll be able to find them. For our easy Dutch oven bread, it's three ingredients, guys. That is it, it's yeast, flour, and salt. We also added in some Italian herbs. We got rosemary, we got some pepper, we got some oregano in there. Give it a little Italian zest. First step to Dutch oven baking, you gotta preheat the oven. So we're preheating it right now, maybe five minutes or so. That thing gets hot quick. I am being important. She does the most, she does so much. She's gonna help me a lot today because we got quite a recipe. Chicken I'm gonna be cacciatore. chopping, I'm gonna be washing, I'm gonna be mixing. Get ready. <laughs> Time to cook. To be honest, every time that we do the Dutch oven bread, it always is a little bit different. So if you're, you're gonna notice this loaf is actually a lot smaller. I just wanted to do half portions of it. It's a common recipe, you can find it online. It's a super simple, easy Dutch oven bread. Let's go take a peek at that bread and see what's going on in there. Probably needs about 10 more minutes by the looks of it. So we've had about 30 minutes with the bread in the Dutch oven at 450, our Dutch oven briquette ratio 450 temperature. So now we're gonna go check it out. I think it should be done. We'll see. Mm, look at that loaf. Mmm, you smell the rosemary right away. I don't know if anyone's ever been to Macaroni Grill, but this is how that loaf smells with that rosemary and the freshness. Mmm, and you can tell this loaf is gonna be crispy, and you know I like that. I can't wait to try this. I can't wait to try this. This Dutch oven chicken cacciatore should be really easy, very gourmet seeming. Let's try it out. First, what we're gonna do is get those chicken thighs. We're going to cover them in some flour, mix it with some garlic powder, red crushed pepper, and a little bit of my Italian herb grinding mix. But we're just gonna coat them in that flour mixture. Gonna sear them really quick in the Dutch oven. Let them get a little bit crispy on that outside. And then we're gonna throw in our stew mixture and I'll show you that. <laughs> Look at her go. She is putting that chicken in there. <laughs> oh yeah, that Dutch oven is nice and hot. Amber's such a good cook. <laughs> So we just flipped over these chickens. They're looking so good. That flour gets it, gives it a nice little light fried crust to it. Look at how I'm just gonna take them out real quick. We got some peppers and onions we're gonna throw into the Dutch oven. We're gonna let those onions and peppers cook a little bit and then we're gonna throw in some salami. That's our honey eye roam secret ingredient for this chicken cacciatore in the Dutch oven. And we're gonna throw in some mushrooms. We're gonna let those all cook down a little bit, throw in some red wine. And then we're gonna throw in some fire roasted diced tomatoes. Throw those chicken back in there, let them cook out for about maybe 20 to 30 minutes. We're gonna eat a Kalamata olive and we're gonna add some in there. We'll put a little bit of that salty juice in there too. How many you want in there? I like a lot of all of everything. I yeah, just love that's salt. My girl. Fresh basil in there too. I'm gonna put a lot because I'm Italian. Amber, the food critic, is <laughs> going to cut the bread. I will break the bread. Yes. Mmm. I really like. A crispy loaf of bread. Look at that. I could honestly smell it from right here. It smells divine. It has that squish in it with some moistness. And it looks like it has absorption power. Mm, it is bubbly. I know, and that chicken is like got Ooh. this lovely crust on the outside. Oh, it's just flavor. All right, let's serve it up. Mm. Time to eat. Let's see. Let's give you this one. This one looks perfect. Okay. Now let's get some of the juice, some sauce, some mushrooms on top. Perfect one, a little bit more green. 
Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Look at that plate right there. Mm. I, I do have to come clean. This was probably one of the more harder recipes that we've ever done. It seems like a simple type of thing, but when you're out camping and there's multiple steps to it, it can become kind of long. And I think also since we did the Dutch oven bread right before it, it was just a lot of work. I still love you Dutch oven, but that was a lot of work. I'm not gonna lie. It really paid off and it's gonna pay off right now while we're eating it. This meal looks saucy and flavorful. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Okay, so I'm gonna have some chicken with some sauce and an olive and a little bit of parsley. That's your By style. far one of my favorites. That's your style, right? You like it. It really is. I really like the chicken with the olives, with the tomato sauce, and of course the onions and garlic. That saltiness really does it for me. If you like salt, let me know. Are you a sweet or a salty person? But I can't get enough of this salty grayness. Let's eat it, I can't wait. I just dipped my bread all up in this saucy sauciness. Let me try it out. Mmm. That Dutch oven bread is probably the freshest, most delicious bread. I love that bread. It is so, so good. You guys gotta try it. Super easy to do. You all know that we love a local shop whenever we travel. What is more Florida than some orange juice? So here we are at Countryside Family Farms. We're getting some fresh orange juice. Amber got a orange juice slushy, slushy, with orange juice ice cream in layers. We got fresh squeezed orange juice, 100% orange juice mixed with fresh orange juice ice cream mixed with vanilla ice cream. So it's like a slushy ice cream mixed together. Let's see, I haven't even tried it. This is one of my favorite things I've ever had in my whole life. Wow, what a dream. A coho? We're gonna find out. A coho? It means a kitchen of her own. It means a kitchen of her own, and they have quiches. On their sign, it says that they're a quicheria. <laughs> Who's ever heard of a quicheria? Well, I like it, actually. I thought you made it up, but it's on the sign. I think it's so funny. I don't even know why. I love it. Quicheria. quicheria. What a word. That's a quiche. That's your uh, veggie bowl, your wow. bowl, and chicken is out. So that's asparagus, pear, and brie, spinach, feta, tomato, or no tomato, spinach, like feta, eggplant, one. sausage. A kitchen of her own. It's a merger of art, cooking, and advocacy for women. And that's what we're all about supporting too. Yeah. Look at how thick that thing is. The closest thing I can resemble it to is a Chicago style piece of deep dish pizza. I mean, it's at least three inches deep, it really looks like a deep dish pizza. My previous thought about a quiche is that most of it is egg and there's just some vegetables thrown in it, but this essentially is spinach inside. And she had so many different types. Sweet, savory, I mean, things you couldn't even imagine could be in a quiche. This really is a quicheria, the one, the only, and the entire universe that I think. Let me know if you know another one, but you have to try this because it is delicious. Let's eat it. So the bottom is very crispy like a croissant and I do have to admit that I took it to go because I wanted to eat it later. We wanted to eat it later and I put it in the cast iron and ideally it should be in an oven. Yeah, in an oven, but we didn't have one so I did burn the bottom, but you know, that's what happens when I cook sometimes. But let's try it anyway. Look at it. We do have an oven, it's called a Dutch oven. But we weren't gonna whip out the Dutch oven for all that, you guys. It's <laughs> dinner time, we're relaxing. I'm so ready for this. Mm. Okay, let me get one more bite. Mm. Mm. This is the best quiche I've ever had. Sometimes the quiche is like too soggy, I don't like it, you know? This is, wow, wow.
thank you so much for watching this video. We are Honey I Roam. And don't forget, please, please subscribe to our channel. Most of you aren't, so please do that for us. Click the like button on this video. Always, always send us a comment so we know what you thought and we always love to hear from you. We love you. So I had the jack, but I didn't have the lug nut wrench thing. So nice, look at these clouds. Ooh. I mean, who gets dough ready as soon as they get to camp? Me, I do, that's what I do. That's what I do. You guys know I love some bread. You know I love my Dutch oven. It's the way it is. Making that bread. <laughs> I was gonna say poop around. Ooh, um, we're just gonna fan dangle around. Can you tell we like it here? We do. We really like it here. Amber's doing the time to cook. I told her, I was like, Amber, you gotta say time to cook. It's always me, you know? Let's share the responsibility. <laughs> and we added in some Italian herbs for that nice flavor. What else? What else? Did I, do? I gotta say, she did a very good job. I'm so proud of you. I'm good at everything. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna add in. Some Wait, there's some on the lens. We're gonna add in some Kalamata I'm sorry, olives. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's just wet. Beautiful, beautiful. We got a little more parsley on the side for the uh, to make up for the salad that we didn't make. <laughs> I have to say something about this, okay? Ow! There is a screw down there. So don't hit your leg on it. This whole time, I thought people have been slowing down in front of our campsite. Look, you can see someone right now, they're slowing down. <laughs> Look, watch this. They literally are checking us out though. They're like, what are they doing? I thought people have just been going slow to check out our setup, our tiny camper and our Jeep, but there's actually a speed bump right in front of our <laughs> campsite, so they have to slow down. So maybe it's a win-win, but this whole time I thought it was just because of us. <laughs> Wrong. You're like, wow, we're so popular. We're getting so many looks. People are slowing <laughs> down for us. A kitchen of... Kitchen of her own. Kitchen of her own. It really is a, is it a quiche? Not a quiche era. Quicheria. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.